Welcome to another video on Get to Know Science. This video is about ionic bonding. So there are two types of bonding, there's ionic and there's covalent. This video is about ionic bonding and I'll make another video to cover covalent bonding later. Ionic bonding occurs when a metal atom bonds with a non-metal atom. So here's an example. Sodium is our metal and chlorine is the non-metal and these two are going to bond ionically. So first of all, I'm only going to draw the outermost shells. Now, sodium has an inner shell with two electrons, then eight, then one, because it has 11 total electrons and protons. So the electron configuration will be this. So I'll just draw the outermost shell and I'm using a cross to represent the electron on sodium. For chlorine, it's going to be two, eight, seven, and that makes 17. So I'm going to, on the chlorine, use circles, or sometimes they're called dots, to represent the seven outermost electrons. And this is called a dot and cross diagram, because we have crosses and we have dots. Now we could have drawn out every electron shell, but for our purposes, we are only interested in the outer shell. So that's what we draw in the dot and cross diagram. Now, by the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back and watch my earlier video. It's called Atomic Structure. Actually, it's two videos. There's part one and part two. Make sure you've watched those first and then watch this one. So when two atoms react, they are looking to increase their stability. And atoms are always more stable with a full outer shell. So if we look at sodium, it could either just lose that electron or it could gain another seven electrons in order to fill its outer shell, to have a full outer shell. For the chlorine, it can either gain one electron or it can lose these seven outer electrons. Either way, it will have an, a full outer shell. Now, obviously, the simplest and easiest option is for sodium to lose its electron, just one, and for chlorine to gain an electron. And that way they both achieve a full outer shell. So let's do that. Sodium will lose an outer electron and chlorine will gain an outer electron. So it will move from there to there. Now, both the sodium and the chlorine have become ions. They are no longer atoms because their charges are not zero anymore. To explain why, have a look at the number of protons versus the number of electrons for each one. So we look at the proton number for sodium, which is 11. So it has 11 protons and it had 11 electrons as well, therefore making a balanced atom with no overall charge but we've lost one of those electrons. So now there is only 10 electrons. So if we amend this, now it's just two eight. And for the chlorine, it's gone up by one. So now the sodium has an overall charge of plus one because it has one more proton than electrons. It has 11 protons and only 10 electrons. So the protons are outnumbering them. And so the overall charge goes to plus one. For the chlorine, it has gained an electron. So now it has 18 electrons. If we add two, eight and eight, we get 18 electrons and only 17 protons. So it has an extra charge of minus one. So we draw the ions like this. We add brackets around them and we put a symbol to indicate their charge. So the sodium has a plus one charge and the chlorine, we put brackets around it and we give it a minus one charge. But what actually causes them to form a bond? Well, it's called electrostatic attraction. So similar to a pair of magnets, opposite charges attract. So they will attract each other and come together. 
because the negative charge and the positive charge will attract and that's called electrostatic attraction so if we draw out the full equation it should look something like this so we started off with a sodium atom and a chlorine atom sodium had one outer electron chlorine had seven so what happened was sodium's outer electron went to the chlorine atom therefore we have ended up with two ions one positively charged because it's lost an electron one negatively charged because it has gained an electron and they are now electrostatically attracted to each other because opposite charges attract and therefore we have what's known as an ionic bond and these two are now ionically bonded together and that's a very strong bond it's difficult to break so that's the full equation using dot and cross diagrams here's another example we have calcium metal and our non-metal is chlorine and for these two to bond the calcium needs to lose its two outer electrons it needs to be able to donate them and give them away however each chlorine atom can only accept one electron to make eight because they already have seven outer electrons they can only accept one more so the calcium needs to give away two but a chlorine can only accept one so what we need is two chlorines so these two chlorine atoms will bond with this one calcium atom to form calcium chloride and we need to be able to show that as a dot and cross diagram so how do we draw this well first of all we have the calcium ion ca now it has lost two electrons so therefore it will have a positive two charge two plus then we can draw our two chlorine ions so here's the first one it started off with seven electrons that's the seventh one and then it gained one from the calcium the other chlorine uh, chlorine atom again started off with seven electrons of its own and then it gained one from the calcium so each chlorine ion has a charge of minus one because each chlorine has gained one electron from the calcium so that's what the dot and cross diagram would look would look like for calcium chloride and this here is the entire reaction using dot and cross diagrams now you may have noticed if we go back up that sodium forms a plus one ion and also sodium is in group one of the periodic table also if you look at calcium calcium forms a two plus ion and it's in group two in the periodic table so the charge on the metal ion tells you which group of the periodic table it's in okay so here's one for you to try i'd like you to pause the video have a go at drawing the dot and cross diagrams to show the ionic bonding of magnesium and oxygen you're going to have to go and look at a periodic table to find out what their proton numbers are then once you're ready and you've drawn your diagram press play again and i'll go through the answer okay so by looking at the periodic table you would know that magnesium has a atomic number or a proton number of 12 and oxygen has a proton number of eight so how are we going to draw the outer shells well magnesium is 12 so that's two eight and two so the outer shell will have two electrons also magnesium is in group two so that's another way you can tell oxygen will go two 
six, and that makes eight. So the outer shell of oxygen will have six outer electrons. So what has to happen now? Well, the magnesium needs to lose its two electrons and they need to be donated to the oxygen, which can accept two. It has six in its outer shell, so it has space for two more to make eight. So what will that look like? Here's the magnesium ion, Mg. It will form an ion of two plus because it has lost two electrons or two negative charges have been lost. And then we have the oxygen ion and the oxygen started off with six electrons which I'll draw here. That's six and then it gained two from the magnesium. So it gained two electrons so it has an overall charge of two minus and if we just continue this this is now only two eight because it lost those two and now this is two eight because it gained two added to the six and has a full outer shell so now now they have they both have full outer shells and they are electrostatically attracted to each other because of their opposite charges and they are ionically bonded Okay, so that was just a quick video on ionic bonding. If you'd like to make any comments, any suggestions, make them in the comment section below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like and subscribe and also share the video with your friends. It might help them as well. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.